So here we have some supercar royalty. The Lamborghini Miura, of course. With those gorgeous lights. Uh, copied, let's be honest, uh, by the uh, 928 a little bit to evoke the sensation this car must have created when it came out and still does now. It still looks great. Um, you know, <laughs> all over a rivalry between the Lamborghini and Ferrari. But so glad they had that rivalry, hey? Otherwise this beast wouldn't have been made. Yeah. Absolutely stunning. Very, very exotic <laughs> here at Broadway, supercar show. Third time. Beautiful. Let's have a look inside. That's right. Wow. Now that would be a nice place to be, wouldn't it? The classic Lambo. Look at those seats. <laughs> Wooden gear stick. Old school analog. B12 behind. Transaxially mounted. Beautiful. <laughs> Got here, classic Lamborghini Morocco. Right, okay, forget that. They say, don't they, never meet your heroes. But when it comes to Lamborghini Countach, if you're my age, about 50, uh, these cars were what you had on your poster as a kid in your room, and I genuinely did have one <laughs> hanging up. Absolutely gorgeous with the turbo 911, of course. It's a much more subtle rival. <laughs> And over there, believe it or not, is a test rossi. We'll film that later. Another childhood hero for me. Uh, I went to the Birmingham Motor Show to see this when they were taking early uh, sales for them. And they mocked it up, I think, with a V12 engine. And obviously, it ended up with a twin turbo V6. Um, and I've seen the, Ga the Gaiden example. This may well be that. Um, but there was a tremendous excitement when these came out, just before the big recession. Obviously, we all know the story. Uh, they were probably people wishing they hadn't put a deposit down, uh, then trying to get out of them. But the ones that kept them, I'm sure, had something unique, which was pretty much the fastest thing on four wheels on earth at the time. And it's still fast now, genuine 200 mile an hour plus supercar. Uh, beautiful looking, beautiful looking. These cars are so sleek, wide as a bus. Um, aerodynamic, obviously, really ruling this car, isn't it? From the sleek back end. Uh, the very long sort of shape as well it helps at very high speed I'm told and the uh, aero wheels but uh, yeah it did borrow a bit of switch gear inside <laughs> but you can't blame Jaguar for this they, this was a project car their teams made in their spare time to get going and they created something wonderful for me uh, and I do remember those days at the NEC with my Porsche 959 t-shirt on with a picture of me standing in front of this which was an icon car for me big Jag fan always will be uh, love one of these. <laughs> one day, hey, small lottery win. What I love about the Morgan Aero is it's a bit like, you know, when you've got a friend that you thought you knew really well and suddenly they start to, uh, you know, getting their hair done by a <laughs> hairdresser and dressing a bit differently and getting a tattoo. You suddenly think, well, do I actually know them? Maybe they're a bit more wild than I thought they were. And uh, I suppose this is the story with Aero 8. You know, when this came out, it's a gorgeous looking car. But it was, you know, a bit in the face of the real tradition of Morgan. But it kept the other bits of the tradition in terms of being hand built, I'm sure. Um, although the body, I think, was some of it was GRP. Um, but um, every much the stunning supercar, isn't it? And uh, they sorted those lights out because they were a little bit cockeyed, weren't they, originally? But I still like the look of them even then. Uh, this looks like a slightly later car, but it's really getting loads of attention at the show here at Broadway, in amongst any exotica because it's just cool. I love it. I absolutely love it. We've got an unusual one here. This is the Seika Wrap X. It's got a Subaru engine in it, standard form 300 brake, but gradable to 600, which you can well believe with anything Subaru. And it's one of the only one that's a race going car. It's a road legal. So we're looking at a unique car in terms of it being a race car on the road effectively. And it's really cool to get in as many looks as uh, the Lamborghinis around it, which takes some doing. But it is really stunning. Very, very low down. Crikey. It can only be about two and a half foot off the ground. It looks like it'd do about 300 miles an hour <laughs> from here. But uh, yeah, really cool car. I hope I pronounced it right. It can only be the Lamborghini Countach. Now, 
I mentioned it earlier with the Testarossa. This was a poster car for me as a kid. I also had the uh, model of it as well, which I've still got in white. This was the 80s dream, wasn't it? And some people actually lived it uh, and had one of these. Now, I know they're not the most practical cars, reversing and the rose jointed suspension, but crikey. <laughs> Look at the crowds they still bring in today. Uh, I don't think anything's ever been like it in terms of the sort of impact before or since, really. Maybe that Bugatti they brought out a few years ago, but even still, you know, maybe I think on the poster, poster versus poster, I think the uh, Countach would still win, uh, particularly with the spoiler, which was just done for dramatic effect, really. I think it slowed them down. It wasn't particularly good aerodynamically, but God, it didn't half look cool, didn't it? And uh, Lamborghinis were great engineering. Uh, you know, that engine's as uh, pretty reliable and you know, incredibly powerful for its time. But uh, they also did the bit that we all like, don't they? They inspired us. I love these uh, AMG GTs. And uh, this one's in a lovely colour, isn't it? Sort of uh, metallic burgundy, I guess. I'm sure it's got a much fancier name from Mercedes than that, you know. But uh, they make an art, don't they, in describing the colours. But uh, it's got a fantastic engine in it. It's a fantastic looking car. And it's got all the right ingredients, doesn't it? Really powerful, sleek looking. Front wheel, uh, rear wheel drive, front engine. Very much the modern 9 to 8 for me. One of these. And I think that rear end is very reminiscent for me of the 9 to 8. Uh, but obviously, this is a much more modern car, and it's got an enormously powerful engine in it, of course. But um, just great cars. People love these things, and they make a fantastic noise. It's nice to see it here at the Supercar Show at Broadway. Very, very nice. Get in that nose of the McLaren. I know they've got a lifter, haven't they, to get it over that step. Probably ought to have filled that in, really. So here at Broadway, just nursing this... Uh, McLaren over the step. Oh, look at that. Yeah, it's the centre, isn't it? It's got the glass. Wow. That is exotic. <laughs> yeah, centre. Lovely. Ayrton, I'm sure, would approve. Though his name's a bit overused in the industry of late, but uh, you can't blame him for it. Wow. <laughs> look at the brakes on it. <laughs> They're like dustbin lids. <laughs> I guess they need to be. Fast doors, I think I'd want solid doors so people couldn't see me shaking. <laughs> what a crack. So we've got the McLaren Senna here, which is uh, one of the hypercars and all the new hypercars, isn't it? And uh, it's every much making an entrance at the uh, Broadway show with as many people staring at this as any of the old classic ones. So it just shows you can still do it. You can still get a hypercar that turns the heads and changes things. But uh, there's lucky fellas in there. <laughs> They've got the uh, star treatment today with this great car. Look at the size of those discs. And it needs them as well, doesn't it? Oh, I love the exhaust. It's like something off Star Trek or something, isn't it? <laughs> star Wars. Well, oh, here we go. <laughs> That's the way to do it. If I could get those fitted on my old Lexus. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> cool. Size of the tyres on it. Absolutely huge rubber it's wearing, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> Here's the owner. Cool. Thanks for bringing it over, fella. We're enjoying seeing it, that's for sure. Lovely paint finish. You know, I guess if you're buying this sort of value car, you're going to be very particular about things, aren't you? You want it to be perfect. And McLaren are making them as good as anyone these days. And it's a real great British success story. It's lovely to see it here. And look at the crowds. I mean, it has brought them all in. So, well done, McLaren. Score. <laughs> Top job. So, all car makers have their sort of poster one, don't they? And then they have other cars that are really good, but perhaps aren't the sort of icons. But this... Uh, having a bit of time to look at this Urocco Lamborghini. It's um, just really cool, isn't it? This is aged. That sort of retro interior. The early sort of 70s supercars. They're just really cool. I know they're not for the faint-hearted in terms of maintenance and looking after them. 
you know, we didn't understand the rust and everything in those days as well as we do now. But it is absolutely cool, isn't it? Okay. Getting a lot of uh, getting a lot of looks as well. We're probably used to some of these newer models, but some of the old shapes. Look at those door handles. Sort of a bit like the SJS ones, aren't they? Which were BL used extensively on other cars, but uh, no, they're not the same. But they've got that similar sort of look to them. Very much 70s. But uh, those exhaust mean business, don't they? And you think what had been on the road at the time? You'd have been chasing around your uh, Vauxhall Beavers and stuff. This would have been every much a supercar uh, back then. Still probably pretty quick now. Sig. I think they'll all be Stig, won't it? <laughs> this beautiful 911 Carrera GT3 RS. These things are probably ever much as quick as anything here in this sort of supercar slash hypercar show. But it hasn't got quite as many, uh, I suppose, for show features. But the features it's got are for doing, and that's devouring tarmac and. Uh, I've seen what one of these can do on a racetrack and it's frightening. Uh, incredible that they can be on the road to be honest, but uh, incredibly capable cars. Looking very uh, fitting in the hypercar, supercar show here at Broadway, but uh, perhaps a little more subtle. It's hard to believe this could look subtle, but I guess next to the Senna that's just come in, it probably does look a bit subtle, but uh, didn't sound subtle when it went up the road, <laughs> that's for sure. So we have here a Maserati Indy, great name and great looking car as well. These 70s supercars that have survived, they are just gorgeous, aren't they? Now every petrol head's dream really, that interior. It might not be ergonomically great, but it looks great, doesn't it? <laughs> and uh, in the true Italian sense, that sort of matters. <laughs> Brilliant. Maserati Indy, beautiful baby sort of blue. If you're a Coventry City fan, let's not get started on football, but this would uh, be a great colour for you, I guess. But um, it certainly wasn't made in Coventry, was it? Maserati. I do like the Maser. There's Elvis on the bonnet there. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's pretty dire, I'm sorry about that. But uh, very excited here at the Supercar Show, as you can imagine. Fill in your proverbial boots with all the exotica on display. I'm like a dog in a forest. <laughs> Lovely, cool. Look at that, Lamborghini Espada in beautiful condition. And we've seen a fair bit of these, haven't we, thanks to Harry and this great show. Um, but it's nice to see, you know, there's more than just one out there. <laughs> I can't imagine there's many, but uh, just look at that interior. And look with the seats in the back. You could almost argue it's practical. <laughs> oh dear, you'd have to be uh, very rich to make that argument, but I guess someone must have made those sorts of arguments in the past when these great GTs were laid up or designed. But you know, it's as wide as a bus, it really is. It's every bit a supercar, isn't it? I mean, it's got those amazing air intakes, we all know about those uh, to the air at high speed. Those are the air intakes uh, that we know about from the Lamborghini Countach, of course. And, um, it's just really cool and it's incredibly low. If you look at the sort of people, you get an idea of just how low and sleek this machine is. And it is big. But then it's got a huge great V12 in it, doesn't it? So it needs that space. Very cool. And obviously we love Aston Martins, don't we? Hand-built perfection. Um, but these old V8 bruisers, they are just so cool, aren't they? I think it's a Rolls-Royce made a supercar. You know, this is what it would look like. It's got that beautiful, gentlemanly interior that you'd uh, anyone would be happy to spend some time in that look complete with four track by the looks of it uh, i think they were handmade aluminium cars mainly pressed up in aluminium maybe some steel but absolutely gorgeous you know i'm going to be 50 this year but this car's going to be 50 next year it's a beautiful aston martin v8 and uh, it's a series 3 1973 here at the broadway show supercars and hypercars classic cars tomorrow although this could be both couldn't it because it's also a real great classic car but i love these aston martin v8s they're right bruises aren't they i always think if rolls royce could make a supercar it would look a bit like this wouldn't it because it's got sort of elegant lines it's just classic it's not too showy but it's showy enough and that interior 
complete with a track by the looks of it. <laughs> it's absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful car. This guy, this is his pride and joy. He's had it for many years, done loads of work to it. Got it in a really good condition and it's uh, been resprayed, but it's a credit to him. Well done. So here's one of the new Aston Martins. This is a DBS. And uh, in that racing green, or the modern version of it, I guess. So it's a super metallic green, I'm sure Aston have got a colour for that. It won't be called racing green, will it? <laughs> DBS. And of course, these are the really hot ones, aren't they? The DBSs. And uh, you get a bit of a feel for that when you look at those enormous vents. Uh, presumably that uh, engine needs to suck in plenty of air to keep that V12 happy. But uh, it's gorgeous to see it at the sort of supercar slash hypercar show here at Broadway and the Cotswolds. Uh, fantastic day out, doesn't cost a lot either, so uh, yeah, get that in your diary. But uh, lovely, lovely car. Nice to see the modern Astins looking every bit as gorgeous as the old ones. <laughs> Size of that, those rear haunches. <laughs> it really is purposeful, isn't it? What a beast. I bet it sounds epic. I always say it wouldn't be a Max Machine uh, car show without seeing a three-wheeled uh, Morgan Aero. And this is the sort of modern incarnation, isn't it? And look at those wheels. They look a bit like those ones on the XJ220. This really does look like it's going to go terrifyingly quick uh, for a three-wheeler as well. Absolutely marvellous. <laughs> Great. So as per tradition, we've got a three-wheeler mo three Morgan. Here at Broadway Classic Car Show in the Cotswolds. <laughs> I love the vents. Cool. Look at the engineering there. Look at those, um, it's the little things, isn't it? Those um, foot pedals. They look like they've been made out of solid billets of aluminium. It's the details that came, isn't it? Beautiful. Cracking machine. Lovely. So here at Broadway, at the supercar slash hypercar day, classics tomorrow, you know. Um, there's this gorgeous Porsche Spider. Um, I know it's not a 911, but uh, <laughs> it's really good looking, isn't it? Getting a lot of uh, admiring glances. Oh, the past the I don't know if you've ever seen the show. I guess it must be. There's a great Porsche presence here. It's been a really popular car, that. And there it is, a Buick Riviera going up the road here at the classic car show. We don't really like using cliches about the Italians and style. But when you do a lot of these car shows and you start looking at the old Italian cars, they just ooze style, don't they? I mean, this is a Fiat. Now, we had a Fiat Panda back in the days where they weren't very reliable. I'll be honest with you, it was a terrible car. But Fiat are a massive name in Italy and they produce some magnificent cars and some of the most beautiful cars as well. And this sort of harks back to the days when Fiat really did put together beautiful looking cars. It's every bit as stunning as any Mercedes or anything else really from what I can see. It's a pleasure to see it. I know the, uh, I love the Alphas as well, but this Fiat really is beautiful to look at. Really nice looking car. Italian styling at its best. Fiat styling. <laughs> You might be wondering what this car is. Oh, it's some sort of early Alfa Romeo or something. But no, it's a Fiat. And of course, Fiat, you know, who owned Ferrari for a bit, I don't know if they still do, made their own magnificent cars. And they've got a rich history of producing some really nice looking cars too. It's beautiful. Petroheads have always had a dream, haven't we? You know, the Italian flair and sort of uh, theatre linked with German engineering. That would be a marriage made in heaven, wouldn't it? And of course, the R8 did do that. Um, some of these had V10 Lamborghini engines and uh, linked with brilliantly engineered Audi mechanicals. It could be the practical hypercar slash supercar. <laughs> I'm sure they're not. But you, know, you convince yourself, don't you, that, yeah, you know what, I bet that'd be pretty reliable, you know, maybe it is. But a uh, very nice looking car here at Broadway. Really lovely paint finish on it. I don't know if you can, the camera's picking this up, it's so bright. I have a heat wave here in England. Uh, but uh, this is absolutely stunning. 
It is, literally. Ten foot wide. <laughs> it's going to hold the road okay, I reckon. Wow, beautiful. So we're at the supercar show here at Broadway and it would be wrong, wouldn't it, not to have a Ferrari. And particularly, you know, this sort of 458 variety that really brought them into the modern era, didn't it? I know there was a few attempts before with the 355, etc. But when this thing came out and we saw it on Top Gear <laughs> and uh, they managed to have that immense power but also delicacy and sort of ability to sort of feel every corner and handle like a dream. It's really, you know, had it all, didn't it? And it still does. God, look at it. It still does. Absolutely stunning. I know I overused that word, but this is out here in the Cotswolds with the sun shining on it. Could be Saint-Tropez. Absolutely gorgeous. Pinifreya. Look at those door handles. <laughs> yeah. Great quote from someone in the crowd. <laughs> if you call something center, it better be special. Well, I'm sure Ayrton would really much appreciate this car and his name because it is special. It's absolutely stunning. State-of-the-art hypercar from McLaren. And let's face it, you know, they are the thinking man's hypercar, aren't they? so well engineered so well thought through and this is drawing a huge crowd absolutely magnificent McLaren Senna drawing crowds here at Broadway we've got another big Aston Martin V8 here and you say big V8 I mean we love the Yank engines of course but that is a big old lump isn't it I think this one's been taken up to seven litres as well by the owner and um, it's in, well, you know Aston's are generally in good condition because the sort of people that buy them look after them. And Aston insists you do it if you take it there for servicing. But this is like new. It's absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> Seven litre of Aston V8 up front. And that classic look. Absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> Fantastic. Well done. I film another 10 of these and I'll film them all here at the uh, supercar slash hypercar show. But parked up the road, so additional car park footage as is tradition. This VR6 Golf. Now, did they make a VR6 in this era or is this a special? Uh, Volkswagen fans, I'm sure, will put me straight on that. I know they made the Corrado, didn't they? Uh, the later ones they put the R6s in, but if it is, well, that must be a rare beast. Anyway, whatever it is, it's dead cool. Additional car park footage. Broadway, supercar show. So as per tradition, some additional car park footage here at Broadway Supercar Show. And this lovely little Fiat Coupe. Now, 20 valve turbo, it's gonna go plenty well enough. And it does have more than a sprinkling of sort of Ferrari look to it, doesn't it? I love the sort of double bubble lights. And, uh, you know, I think these are going to be real collectible cars. Wouldn't mind one myself. I bet it's a hoot to drive as well. Plenty fast enough. And um, just, again, Italian styling, at the moment at least, on a relatively okay budget. Um, probably need to get one before they start rising in value significantly. I'm sure they're already on the move. But uh, just a really cool, nice looking car. And it screams, doesn't it? Italian styling. Brilliant. Some more car park footage here at uh, the Broadway Supercar Show. And who doesn't love a Subaru STI? Probably is an original STI, this we assume. Uh, there's quite a few copies mined, but even the uh, standard turbo ones are pretty lively. Um, but this uh, STI Subaru Technica Internationale with its gold wheels is absolutely cool. Look, additional top mounted air vent, you know, like you have in rallying. Um, they're an absolute hoot to drive these things every much the modern classic you know it's the uh, mexico of its day you know in rally these were 
They roared supreme for many years, didn't they? It's got good mechanical, spoil drive, great sounding engine, and uh, prices, of course, are rising on the really rare ones. They've already gone stratoscopic, but uh, you can still get these for okay money. And yeah, I know rust can be a bit of an issue, it's surprising, but they, they can be. But uh, really cool, lovely to see here.